Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I get a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Monta Watch Noble, um, which is a really nice piece, and I'm looking forward to uh, share it a little bit with you. Um, uh, first off, though, full disclosure, this guy was provided to me directly from Monta Watch. This is a review sample that they sent along. Um, I told them, as always, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be gem, might be junk. They still sent it along, and they've seen me do my reviews before. I, I've talked about their stuff in the past here. Um, but nonetheless, we have to assume this is the very, very best quality controlled and regulated and polished and every damn thing version of this guy ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the uh, nature and quality of my review. One other thing that's worth noting is that this is a pre-production sample. There are not, uh, this has not yet hit the market uh, formally, so uh, again, we have to assume, although I've been told that everything's going to be roughly identical to what it is here, and I sort of hope it is, um, at the same time, uh, there, there may be differences, and uh, yeah, there, there we go. Next thing, let's do a little bit of size measurement on this guy. Uh, bust out the uh, calipers here and set them to reasonable units. Um, what we have here is an overall size, excluding the crown, of about 38.8 millimeters here. Um, we have a thickness on this guy of a very, very thin and respectable 9.9 .9 millimeters. We have a lug width here of, uh, what do we got here? It looks to be about 20 millimeter lug width on this guy. And the lug to lug distance, which is one of the most important measures for wearability. We are coming in here ballparky around 46.2, which is a very, very reasonable sort of lug width here. Um, and so I, yeah, there, there is that. Next thing, this is a brand new piece out of Monte Watch. Monte is a brand that I've been watching with, uh, uh mounting interest. Get it? Like mounting, but mounting. Um, because they, uh, uh, they, they've done a bunch of pieces before. They started off with the Triumph, then the Ocean King, the uh, Sky Quest, uh, then the Atlas, and now this guy. This is their latest piece, and it, this, like I said, is a pre-production piece, but it is currently available for pre-order, and in fact, I have pre-ordered it. In fact, I have pre-ordered this on day freaking one at full price for what it's worth, um, and so there, there is that. The uh, pre-order price on this guy, I think, is 1600 bucks, and the full uh, full bill price after the pre-order ends is 1700 uh, 1760 that is at least according to the Monta folks. So anyways, that's what we got going on here. And uh, let's go ahead, jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very interesting little watch here. So on the good side, to start with, you do get some choices here. This is the blue dial. This is uh, the uh, degrade blue. Um, so it is, but there is also an opaline silver dial, which I actually haven't seen in person, but which I'm sure is pretty attractive. Um, and it is sold on the bracelet, but as always, you can buy any of the straps that Monta offers. So they offer a leather, they offer a uh, rubber. Any of those will fit, along with any straps by Everest, uh, which is actually a sister company, or brother, I don't know what the heck they are, step siblings, I don't freaking know. Uh, they, they, they are related to each other in some meaningful way, uh, so any of those straps are going to work, so you've got a lot of options as to how you wear this guy. Next thing, this guy has a slightly different logo, which is actually currently being covered up by the minute hand here, so that's really, uh, that, 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 that's super helpful, but I'll go ahead and I'll stop the movement. And move it that way. By the way, that is a hacking second, so it stopped there when I was doing that. But you can see here their logo is a little bit different. It's a very subtle difference, but I think it is nice, and I think it is an improvement. So that's good. Next thing, the water resistance here. We see here is 500 feet or 150 meters. That is absolutely good to go. Not that you're going to be swimming and scuba diving with this thing, but you probably could, right? Um, This is not something where you have to worry about water, and that little bit of extra margin will definitely make it so that as it wears over time, and as the seals dry out and such, you're going to have a little bit more margin of error with the screw down crown and everything like that. So I appreciate that very much. Next thing, the movement on this guy is worth discussing. Here is the movement here. This is a mechanical watch, as you can tell by the fact that this is dick, dick, dicking along in a, a, a very, very subtle way here. But this is a, uh, it is a Salida uh, SW300-1 movement. In fact, you can see it being said, uh, that is said right here. There's a Salida logo. If you're looking close enough, yeah, there it is, SW300. Uh, is, is that a 3 or a 2? I want to say it's a 300. Anyways, I digress. Um, yeah, it looks like a 3. Uh, I'm, I'm questioning myself over here. Uh, but it is a Salida movement, and the final version will be Salida. I'm not so proud. Apparently, that had gone around as a uh, rumor at one point in time. We can see here it's been, uh, you know, dressed up a little bit by Monta. They got their logo on it over there. Um, but yeah, there's that. And the nice thing about an SW300 movement is that it is pretty straightforward, right? You are going to be able to get parts for this pretty much anywhere. Here, I'll give you a beautiful watch face there as you're looking at it. Um, but you can get parts for it pretty much anywhere, and any watchmaker 
filmmakers should be able to work on it. It's not a particularly tricky movement. You're not going to have to send it back to Manta if something goes wrong or for service later on down the road. Um, it also has some very nice features to it. It has, as you can see here, not only a uh, hour, minute, second hand, but it also has a date feature. And one thing that it has in the date feature is a quick set. So um, actually, what I'm going to go ahead and do, because it is in the evening, and I'm not 100% sure where the safe zone is for using the quick set, uh, it's worth noting that on a lot of automatic watches, you shouldn't be adjusting the quick set. Usually the, 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 the wisdom is between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m., but I'll move it back a little bit further, and then I'll use the quick set dial. And uh, if I go to the second crown position, we can see here, now it is the 10th. Wow, time sure flies when you film in reviews, right? So it's got date with quick set. It also has a hacking seconds, which means that if I pull the seconds out, it will um, continue to, uh, or I'm sorry, it will stop ticking, which will allow you to set the time very precisely, which is a beautiful thing. Um, and if this is regulated well, the movement itself is very solid. It is a good old-fashioned workhorse movement. As cliche as that is, it is 100% true here. And speaking of the regulation, guess what? It's regulated well. I took this guy and I put it on my time grapher, which is a device that measures exactly how well a watch is keeping time. And by God, it works. Um, they are willing to guarantee, and this is one of the things that I really like about Mont, is that they guarantee you a certain degree of accuracy. And their guaranteed value is plus or minus five seconds a day. The watch should be within in plus or minus five seconds a day, which is a very, very good set of values. Um, this one particularly is running on average around plus one seconds a day across all the positions. And I think the highest deviation I measured was a negative two seconds per day. That is good. That is a really good accuracy. Now, mind you, um, this is a review sample. So we have to assume that this thing has been more regulated than salt in a homeowner's association for slugs. But at the same damn time, that's some good accuracy. And if it's able to hold that at it once, it's, it's a solid movement. So the fact that they are willing to give you a movement that can be accurate, and they're willing to regulate it such that it is going to be guaranteed to be accurate, that's a win. Next thing, this guy actually has very solid loom. I'm going to charge it off camera with a powerful flashlight here, and you will see exactly what I mean. Check that loom. Oh, yeah. And one little detail that's worth noting is that the, uh, the, the hands here, this is going to be covered up there uh, just to make my life more difficult, but you can see actually that the hands are loomed on both sides. It's not just loomed on the front of the hand, it's loomed on the back too, and that's the same for the hour and the minute hand. That's great. You also get full loom at every one of the hour markers, as well as a double loom pip at 12 o'clock to tell you what time it is late at night. The loom is beautiful. It lasts all damn night long. It is absolutely great. This is a dressier watch, and very often dressy watches use crappy loom. This is solid. I appreciate that very much. It's also a very legible watch. And it's legible in a couple of ways. I mean, to start with, this is one of those things where you can kind of cross your eyes and still read it from across the room, right? The, 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 the darker blue dial means that the hands are very nicely separated, and it's very easy to see which one is doing which. That, that, that's great in and of itself. Um, but, you know, the, then the indices, and plus the fact that even if the loom isn't really going, there, there's enough polishing in here that you can usually see one of the indices, and you can see the hands just reflected in that polishing, which is absolutely great. Um, I appreciate that very much. Next thing, the bracelet on this guy is awesome. This is one of the better watch bracelets that is out there. Um, because it not only is it very well articulated, it wears absolutely beautifully, and it, it's very, very compact. If you want to set the damn thing down on the table, right? You just <laughs> pop the whole thing down like this. And it, anyways, um, so it's a really, really nice little bracelet in that way. It's articulated well, but it also includes two half links. Um, the half link, of course, is a link that is half the size of a regular link, which means that you can put this in exactly the, the, at the exact the length you want it to. And then once you get it there, you are able to adjust it very quickly because they offer a toolless quick adjust. Right there, this little part of this guy, if I were to pop this up, lift that up, what that does is that takes this little piece here out of these grooves in the bottom, in kind of the floor of the clasp here. And then if I want to shorten it a little bit, I can pull it shut. If I want to lengthen it a little bit, I can pop it open a little bit. And then I have more length on my bracelet. What this means is that if you are out and about and your wrist swells up because you just had a super salty meal or something, uh, if you are in a hyponitree or hypernitremic state, that is a lot of freaking salt. I'm being throwing the 20 cent words around, right? Um, for a $1,600 watch, I guess it makes sense. But you can adjust that very, very nicely. 
And that is great. And this is something that Monte has not historically had, both the half-links as well as the quick-adjusted models that weren't the Ocean King. In fact, I, I, I beat the crap out of him in the last few reviews for having this amazing bracelet and then not doing the half-links and not having the, the quick-adjust elsewhere. Now it's everywhere. And that's great. And in fact, they've added that for their other models as well, which is a, a really good example of them listening to uh, the customer feedback, because that's a really great feature. Next thing, value-wise, this is actually really good. Now, absolutely, 1600 bucks is a lot of freaking money, 100%. But this is giving you a lot for that money in terms of the finishing that we'll talk about in a little bit here. So I really do feel like, although this is not a cheap watch, it represents very, very strong value relative to any of the other big Swiss brands. And although it's worth noting, by the way, that this is a Swiss-made watch, um, but the company itself is based out of St. Louis uh, here in the U.S. of the A. I think the value is great. And then finally, on the good side, and this is a little more intangible, it's not about the watch itself, but this is what happens when a watch company puts in effort, right? Monte is a company that is hustling. They are doing their absolute damnedest to, to, to deliver really impressive stuff, right? They're pushing amazing finishing for the value. They are pushing features that are actually relatively seldom found, like in the bracelet, that kind of thing. They are really responding to customer feedback with things like the quick adjust, the half links. This is really what it looks like when a watchmaker is really trying, when they are really doing their very, very best to make a, a piece that is good as it can be for the price. Rather than resting on the laurels of their brand, they are pushing ahead. And as a result, they've created something that feels like it very easily rivals things like Rolex and Omega and Piaget, but with a sense of effort and trying and value that the other brands are lacking and without some of that strong Swiss markup. So I really appreciate the fact that Monta is a company that feels like they are really doing their absolute best to build their brand, and they're building it not with fancy marketing and things like that, but they're building it with watches that are just really freaking good uh, for the value. Oh my God. And so to me, that, that, that is an excellent thing. This is a company that is really trying, and they're trying not to, they're trying to earn your, your loyalty, so to speak. They're trying to earn your, your, your wallet by, <laughs> and your whole damn wallet, let's be real here, by actually putting in the effort and making a better product. So to me, at least that's what's good here is that it shows a lot of effort here. It's a good value, an awesome bracelet, great size, great legibility, solid loom, guaranteed accuracy, a pretty solid movement, good water resistance, and a bunch of different choices. The great thing to me, as you might imagine, is the finishing on this watch. This wash is beautifully finished for its price. This feels like a very, very well-balanced higher-end sports watch out there. And I, I mean that in a bunch of different ways. I mean, not only are we looking at sapphire and sapphire on the back here, but we are looking at things like the indices here. And I'll, actually, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see a little closer. If we look at the indices here, these are absolutely beautiful. The, the indices here are uh, just, they've got a nice bit of reflectivity, a little bit of roundness to them here. I'll try and clean this off so you can see exactly what I'm on about here. But they've got a little bit of rounding to them. They've got a little bit of reflectivity to them. They've got a nice polish. The hands, similarly. Look at the hands. They are not flat. The hands have three different facets. Is the top up there, and then there's the central part, and then there's the bottom part. Those facets mean that these, these hands are going to pick up on light a little bit more readily. The second hand is beautifully polished in there. I mean, look at that damn thing, and you can see that it's even a little bit bent in the back there, uh, which is great, uh, and I mean bent to the sides there. Um, you can see here a very, very nicely finished clasp here. This looks pretty solid. Not only is it the Monta logo, but it just, it's good. It's got some nice polishing to it, etc. You can see the sides of the links have a little bit of polishing right along the back there. And see the movement has a little bit of finishing on there, as well as just generally nice engraving on the back. Good minimalist kind of things there. All the indices are applied here. The, part, the date window has just an absolutely beautiful polish to it. This dial, the dial is freaking amazing. The, the, the degradé blue, and I'm going to use a separate flashlight off screen here to kind of show you what you're getting off of this. So not only do you get a little bit of sunburstitude, but it actually gets darker as you go towards the edge of it. This is not something that shows well in pictures, but this dial going from a light to a dark as you go out there this looks astoundingly good in the sun i i had seen pictures of it and it was already like oh yeah that looks pretty good and then i got it out of the box it was just like oh yes this is great this is a stellar dial and i would 100 percent recommend thinking about the blue i mean the silver is great too it's attractive but oh boy is this dial pretty so i'm a huge huge fan of this dial here it's a subtle thing but it looks great and just overall the finishing on this guy is stellar even the 
polish on the inside of the bracelet, like on the inside of the deployant clasp. They're even trying there. And the polish on this bezel, too, is the other thing. What's that? Reflected in the bezel? Is that an I Am Nick Shabazz t-shirt available at Shabazzar.com? I don't know. Just saying. Anyways, it, it's polished enough that I can make a t-shirt plug. And that's something right there. So this is amazing finishing. It is running with the big boys, so to speak, when it comes to finishing. And I really appreciate that. Especially given that the big boys are charging a couple grand more than this at the very, very least. Um, You know, we compare it even to like this guy. This is an Omega, uh, Omega Aqua Terra. Uh, this is an older generation. This is a quartz model. But we see here that in terms of finishing, these two are not far apart. Yeah, frankly, I would give the edge to Monta in a couple of places here. So I really am a big, big fan of the finishing here. I think this is excellently, excellently done. Uh, and to me, that is what is great. On the bad side, a couple of little things. Um, to start with, the movement finishing is not quite to the same level as the, uh, the the rest of the case. What I mean by that is that certainly they've done a little bit of effort to dress up the movement. But one of the things that you do gain when you go to a full-on Omega, for instance, is a little bit more in the way of like, you know, this is just a, a slightly more pretty figured movement here relative to the Monta. Of course, this is also three grand less. Well, two grand less, but still, yeah, it's a thing. Um, it, that is one of the differences you'll get. Another difference that you'll get as you go up to the higher end is that this is not a strongly anti-magnetic watch. It should be the same as any other Salita movement, but, you know, that does, it's not, you know, super anti-magnetic resistant as you get with some of the master chronometers from Omega, as well as some of the other Rolex stuff. This is, again, it's a nitpick at this kind of price point, but it is one of the few things that you gain as you go up higher. Um, a high polished bezel uh, is absolutely great but it does pick up little dings and scratches. Even this review sample right there, you can see there's a little bit of scratching going on there, um, which is not necessarily ideal. I, I, I feel like, you know, it's there, but it, you're going to get that. It's going to happen, and you're going to have to be okay with it there. Um, High-polished bezels get scratched. That is their nature. It is their joy, um, and, and that's okay. Uh, at the end of the day, you get some sort of, uh, you get a little bit of a patina thing going on. Well, yeah, there were definitely scratches on this, but it's still more polished than anything. So I appreciate that. Then finally, um, probably the thing that I like least about this guy is the length of the deployant part of this class. You can see here that the deployant itself is far longer than the clasp. And what that means is for somebody with relatively small wrists, and that would be me. I have a wrist that is around like a six point some odd inches. What you get here is that the, this is really hard to show off on camera, but what you get here is that the, the, the end of the clasp is actually coming out to here, and so the bracelet isn't able to wrap around in quite such a fluid way. It kind of sticks out a little bit further here, as opposed to on this side where it just goes straight onto the wrist. Is it the end of the world? Absolutely not, but it is one thing I'd like to see them address a little bit more in the future, and I'd like to see, you know, uh, that way everything is just a little bit more compact. So, um, to me at least, that's what's bad here, is that the, uh, the, the clasp is a little bit wide relative to the length of the, the, the buckle itself. Um, the uh, high-polished bezels will definitely pick up some scratches. It is not a strongly anti-magnetic watch, and the movement finishing is not quite where you're at at the super higher end, but this neither is the price. So, um, to me, that's, that's the bad. On the ugly front, there's nothing ugly here, so let's go to the conclusion, which is, as you might imagine, this is a really great watch. It's got a very nice case, a solid movement with a good guarantee of accuracy. It's beautifully finished with an amazing bracelet and a style and approach that I feel like really suit Monta's brand. And even though it's going to be $1,750, bucks, this really does end up feeling like value if you put it up next to Omega or uh, Rolex or the Grand Seikos of the world. All of those things are going to be, this feels like it runs with the big dog, so to speak. Sure, it's got a couple of little issues, like the polished bezel scratching, the bezel, uh, the clasp a little wider than it needs to be, but honestly, this is great. This is a really, really excellent watch. It is absolutely good. And more importantly, the reason that I ordered this on very, you know, day one that I saw that this was available, uh, two things. A, because Monta is a brand that has impressed me over and over again. I've been a fan of a lot of their stuff. I've had a review of every one of the things, and I owned an Ocean King for a while which only got dethroned by buying a freaking Omega. Couldn't afford to keep both, right? Um, but this is a case, and in that case, the Omega felt like it outclassed the, 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 uh, the, the Ocean King just a little bit. In this case, honestly, this feels more like Monta. This uh, watch here feels like Monta has finally kind of come into their own. 
so to speak. This feels like Monte has hit the stride. They have hit their own, this is the most genuine expression of Montacity, if you will, that, that, that we have seen yet. This is more, this is a kind of more than a bit fancy sport watch. It is a watch that is a fine tool. It functions great as a, as a timepiece, right? It's got all the things you would want. It is an absolutely stellar watch, but it is not a tool watch, and it's not trying to be. The It is the Monta aesthetic, which at least to me is a little bit fancy. It's a little bit polished. It's a little bit ah uh, ha ha and you know what that's okay this is that without any other airs it's not pretending to try and be a dive watch it's not pretending to be a gmt watch it well i mean the other ones are gmt watches but it, and it's not covering that up with anything else this is just monta saying you know what we're sporty, but we're a little bit fancy. Deal with it. And this watch then comes across as very genuine. It comes across as very composed. It comes across as very earnest and very on point. That's a weird thing to say about a watch, but it genuinely feels that way. This feels like the truest expression of Montahood that, that they have released, and it is without any doubt their best watch yet. Um, This is a watch that I think is really strongly competitive in a bunch of different places. This competes beautifully with like the Omega Aquaterra. I think in a lot of ways, case, shape, etc. This is going to be up against the Aquaterra for a lot of people. This is going to be up against the Rolex, uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetual, even up against the Datejust to an extent. This is going to be up against the Piaget Polo. Is another piece that kind of has a, not a similar look, but it's kind of doing the same thing, a fancy sport watch. From a movement perspective, absolutely the Monte is not quite at the same level as those. That's 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 the truth. But finishing and appearance-wise, they are absolutely neck and neck. And it's important to remember that depending on which one of those you're choosing, the Monte is less than half of the price. And in all many cases, like a freaking fifth of the price, right? And so it's competing very well with watches that are way, way, way above its price point. And so I am just really, really impressed. This this watch is a gem, 100%. It is a watch that I pre-ordered day one, seeing the look, and having it in hand makes me feel more and more like, okay, Monta, come on, I'll send you back your review sample, but make with the real one, because I really like this. This is the best thing that Monta has made. It is a really excellent watch, just independently, and it is a perfect example of what happens when a good micro brand is trying really hard to deliver good value, good effort, and ends up hitting it absolutely out out of the park. So this is a great piece and is one of the very best values in the luxury watch market. And I am super enthusiastic about it. And I will very be very, very glad to be an owner of this guy uh, when they finally hit the U.S. shores in their uh, full production form. So uh, keep an eye out perhaps for a follow-up video after some time. But most of all, Monta, well done. Uh, keep doing this kind of thing and soon enough you're going to be freaking Rolex. Uh, although hopefully you're not going to hate us as much. Anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you and that you... Uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day and that you found this review to have no bull in it. Uh, uh, okay. Have a good one, everybody. Bye now.